UFOs, Skinwalkers, The Afterlife, and Steve the Pirate. This and more coming up on The Edge. my fellow fringe connoisseurs. You're watching On the Edge with J. Jordan Hawk, your source for strange and edgy news. And for our first story, let's talk about Robert Bigelow. And if you're asking, who the heck is Robert Bigelow, then thank the lords of COBOL you stumbled across my show, because trust me, this guy is edgy. So let me tell you about Robert Bigelow. First of all, he is the founder of Bigelow Aerospace, though that's not what makes him edgy. Bigelow got a lot of attention a few years ago when the New York Times ran with the story that the U.S. government had secretly been studying UFOs while at the same time publicly denying it. It did so through something known as the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, or ATIP, started by Senator Harry Reid. And if you read those stories, you start encountering the name Robert Bigelow because he's a good friend of Harry Reid and his company helped investigate the UFOs. Bigelow is also a name that comes up if you watch The Secret of Skinwalker Ranch, and who doesn't? That show premiered on the History Channel last year, and wow, if you haven't watched it, save it for Halloween and binge this show. It'll do more to give you nightmares than any horror film from Blumhouse you could possibly watch. What is Skinwalker Ranch? This is an area of land in Utah that has a very long history of paranormal phenomena, including everything from vicious spectral attack dogs, unusual electromagnetic readings, to, to cattle mutilations and glowing orbs. There is even something there that really likes to eat llamas, as we see video evidence for in the show. Take everything interesting about UFOs, cryptids, ghost stories, and a few ancient myths, wrap them together, and you get Skinwalker Ranch. Well. For those of you who follow edgy news, you quickly learn to ignore things that are too good to be true, and this is too good to be true. But it turns out that this billionaire, Robert Bigelow, purchased Skinwalker Ranch and had a team of scientists pouring over the place for a decade. So this guy, working with the government, thinks there is something to the story, and he's discovered some really unexplainable things during his own scientific investigations of this ranch. But why is Bigelow in the news for today's show? Well, it turns out he's not just interested in UFOs and skinwalkers. This guy just founded an organization called Bigelow Institute for Consciousness Studies, dedicated to, amongst other things, finding evidence for the survival of consciousness after death. I have to say, I kind of want to be this guy. A rich billionaire with so much extra money that he can use it to hire legions of scientists to crack all the mysteries that most scientists ignore. Well, I don't completely want to be him, because it sounds like he's had a pretty tragic past, including the death of his son, which certainly motivates his interest in the paranormal. Oh, I almost forgot the best part of this story. His Institute for Consciousness Studies is sponsoring an essay contest. If you think you got what it takes to write a long essay detailing evidence of life after death, you could earn yourself $500,000. Now, you do have to fill out an application for this contest, which is due by February 28th. Only if accepted do you get to write and submit your essay. I could use that money. I mean, I barely make half that here on my YouTube channel. I would start up a Hawk Institute for edgy science. But I don't know what I'd consider a proof of an afterlife. I've always been intrigued by kids who spontaneously recall past lives. Or perhaps Oxford physicist and mathematician Roger Penrose's theories about consciousness being a quantum phenomena magnified by cellular microtubules. Neuroscientists always want to ruin everything by saying consciousness is generated by the brain, and with brain death goes the death of consciousness. But I prefer the idea that the brain is more like a radio. It is a receiver of consciousness, not the generator of it. And just like if you bust open that radio, you won't find anything generating radio signals, you won't find anything generating consciousness inside the brain. So what do you all think about Robert Bigelow, and what would you write about in an essay as proof for the survival of consciousness? Leave your thoughts down below, especially if you've seen a skinwalker. For our second story, I've got even more afterlife news for you. It turns out that Microsoft just received a patent for a chatbot that allows you to speak to dead loved ones. That sounds so Ray Kurzweil. 
Kurzweil, recall, wrote that immensely influential book called The Singularity is Near, where he argues that sometime soon it'll be possible to download your consciousness into a computer, and that he looks forward to the day that he'll be able to recreate his father's consciousness. It won't be the real thing, but if you can't tell the difference, there's no difference. Well, that seems to be the philosophy of these chatbot makers, only they use your dead loved one's social media presence to imitate them. Good God! I hate to think what I'd sound like based on my social media presence. Probably just a really edgy guy who never takes anything seriously. So unlike the real me. But I have a question for Microsoft. Is anyone actually asking for a chatbot that imitates our loved ones? It's like those Windows updates that literally no one wants. I mean, they have to force them on us. This just seems like a bad idea for so many reasons, but that only means it's coming and probably way sooner than we imagine. This seems so macabre to me. Who would have thought that Mary Shelley's monster would finally take the form of a chatbot? I wouldn't use it. But what about you? Would curiosity get the better of you? Would you be tempted to provide Microsoft with emails and social media posts so they could parrot your dead loved ones? Wow, talk about identity fraud. Comment down below, and don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And for our third and final story, I've got two edgy new shows to recommend to you, starting with a new documentary that dropped on Netflix recently entitled Surviving Death. This series is based on the best-selling book by the same name by investigative reporter Leslie Keen, which in turn is a follow-up to her immensely popular UFOs, generals, pilots, and government officials go on the record. Are you all noticing a theme with today's show? Now, like the book, the Netflix series examines various evidence for the survival of consciousness. I've only watched the first episode, and so far it's pretty intriguing, focusing on near-death experiences, ones that took place after the heart stopped and the patient was brain dead. So, hallucinations don't work as an explanation, since there was no brain activity. There are six episodes in the series altogether, and other episodes deal with everything from mediums and seances to reincarnation. So, if you need some ideas for Robert Bigelow's half a million dollar essay contest, check out Surviving Death on Netflix. And let's end today's show with more aliens. Specifically, my second recommendation is a show called Resident Alien, which airs Wednesday night at 10 p.m. Eastern on Sci-Fi. Now let me start by saying that I barely watch shows on network TV anymore, and that's even more true of the Sci-Fi Channel. I think the last show I watched on the Sci-Fi Channel was Caprica, that much-loved prequel to Battlestar Galactica. Well, evidently I was the only one who much loved it, since it didn't get a second season. But like most people, I gravitated to streaming, where all the really cool, edgy stuff is happening, like Daredevil, Jessica Jones, or Travelers on Netflix, or The Boys on Amazon Prime. But unlike most people, I still haven't cut the cord yet. Something keeps me paying exuberant amounts of money for a service I rarely use, and I finally found out what I've been waiting for, Resident Alien. I loved the pilot episode, and I almost skipped it. I was perusing the TV schedule with my DVR, read the description, an alien hides out in a small town in Colorado when the locals call upon his help to investigate a murder. And my reaction? Lame. Like I said, it's Sci-Fi Channel, of course that was my instinctual response. But I recorded it anyway, figuring I could simply delete it after watching the first minute. That always gives me momentary satisfaction. But I was hooked, almost from the very beginning. In no short part because I saw in the first minute that Alan Tudyk is the star of this show. You better know who Alan Tudyk is. You know, Steve the Pirate from Dodgeball. One of my all-time favorite guilty pleasures. Minus the guilt. Or, better yet, he was the pilot from Firefly, that short-lived cult favorite sci-fi series from 2002 that Fox ensured a quick death to by choosing to air the episodes out of order. And then, Tudyk went on to play in Dollhouse, and more recently, K2SO in Rogue One. So, if you know his work, you know he steals the show in everything he's in. Probably one of our most underrated actors. I love this guy! And I love him in this show, too, which is kind of a quirky, dark comedy. He is quite convincing as an alien outsider trying to fit in amongst these oddball humans in rural Colorado who just happens to have a rather dark mission that I won't give away. What do you guys think of Resident Alien? Have you seen this show? Or what do you think of Alan Tudyk if you haven't? Is he enough to make you want to check this show out? Leave your thoughts down below. 
Just keep them civil and keep them edgy. And that's our show for today, everyone. I'm your host, J. Jordan Hawk. See you next time on The Edge. And if you like edgy content, check out my award-winning young adult novels, Puka is the Outcast, A Scout is Brave, and Unwatchigi the Dreamer.